Go ahead. Mr. President-elect, go ahead. Can you say categorically a question? Mr. President-elect, can you give us a question? Don't be rude. Can you give us a question? Don't be rude. No, I'm not going to give you a question. I'm not going to give you a question. Can you say categorically? You are fake news. Sir. Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Janda. Welcome back to Dave versus the MSM. I'd like to thank you for joining me today and thank you for networking this information. We are available. As you know, I can only go so far on this platform uh, because of, uh, well, do we want you this way, right? Dave Janda is the stopping point. That's where all my content is based. It is heavily suppressed on every social media platform. And the reason is because we, we tell you and elucidate and dissect the facts, the data, the science when necessary. And it's something that the, the syndicate, the globalist cult, the New World Order crowd, the deep state, the criminal international banking syndicate, whatever you want to call it, they're all the same. They don't want you to know about. Because it makes you an easier target victim for them. And it also protects their business plan and operation. And their business plan and operation can be summarized into, it's all about more control, more power, and more for their ever precious financial resources, like they don't have enough. At the expense of you, and your freedom and your liberty, and your future and your life, and our constitutional republic. That's what it's about, folks. When you dissect out the criminal syndicate, the globalist cult. It's really run by the banking families. Hmm? Every time I say this, I get in trouble. So why not more trouble? The Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Lazards, the Pincuses, the Warburgs, the Seifs, the Loeb's, just to name a few. But the very top is a family called the Paysur, P-A-Y-S-E-U-R family. And you might say, I don't really hear about them other than Jandis talking about them. Well, that's because you get in a huge amount of trouble when you do. And that's just the way they want it, in a sense that they want their middle-level puppets. And look, too many people still believe to this day that the top of the food chain are the Klaus Schwab's and the George Soros's and the Obama's and the Clinton's and the Bush's and the Romney's and the Ryan's and the McConnell's and the McCarthy's and the Pelosi's and the Schumer's. Stop. They're middle-level puppets, all of them. They think they're high-end, but they're not. So don't fall into that trap yourself. Because if you focus, and this is what the banking families want, they want you to focus on the middle-level puppets because then you don't realize that there's a whole chain above them that's really calling the shots. And one of the tentacles, a big important tentacle, maybe their most important tentacle, is their central bank system around the world. Here in the United States, it's the Federal Reserve, you know, created in 1913. Implemented in the dead of the night through Woodrow Wilson and a Congress that was controlled, that voted on Christmas Eve to bring them into power, to take control of the money supply. Because if you control the money supply, you control it all. And that's the business model they've relied on for over 100 years worldwide. Jim McCarthy recently uh, wrote The Money Spiders, The Ruin Nation of the United States by the Federal Reserve. Remember, federal's in the name, but they're not part of the federal government. They're not part of the executive, legislative, or judicial branch of the United States government. They are independent entity. They are a, a group of bankers that got control of our money supply and still do have control of it. And they only look out for the interests of the bankers. Not you, not me. They don't give a rip. They this, oh, we're about unemployment, we're about inflation, and that's our mandate. Stop. Their mandate is to, to launder as much money as possible from the useless eaters, us, the taxpayers, into their banks, and their banking system, their banking families. That's it. And they're all corrupt. Here's what Jim McCarthy said, quote, sneak, now this is being politically correct to call these criminal scum this. Uh, 
Sneaky and underhanded. Sneaky and underhanded. Criminal and evil. Huh? It's more like it. The Federal Reserve has been sucking the lifeblood out of the United States since 1913, since its creation. Like a black widow spider, it weaves a web of corruption and deceit. Unknown to its prey, well, not you, not me, but that's what they want to be unknown. The Fed's bite is poisonous, deep, long-lasting, and brings financial upheaval and misery to Americans, end quote. You can say that about every central bank in the world, and it's to every person in the world that they bring misery to. And they cover their tracks by providing false and fraudulent data through what? Their little puppets, their bobbleheads in governments, producing data about unemployment, about inflation, to keep, just keep you in line to think, gosh, my, my financial life is not doing well. But I hear the government statistics that are repetitively pe repeated through ad nauseum through their propaganda arms in the bought-off lamestream fake media, which, as I've told you, also includes Fox News, and I've gotten a lot of trouble for that over the years, but I've been right. The Murdochs that own, the Fo own Fox, they sit, on the, they sit at the Council on Foreign Relations. Come on. Globalist Think and Implementation Tank. They feed you propaganda, bogus information, data, to keep you in line, to make you think it's your fault that you're not doing well financially. No. No, they want, the point, they want you pointing your own finger at yourself rather than them as being the perpetrators of this. Well, I'm only working two or three jobs. I guess that's not enough to... What? They're the culprits. They're the criminals. They want you to believe that the unemployment rate is 4%. Well, I'm unemployed and I'm really looking for a job and there's supposedly all these jobs out there, but I can't... And then you get people in the independent media that tell you the truth. Mike Snyder recently wrote this. More than 105 million working age Americans do not have a job right now. Our long slide toward economic oblivion continues and survey after survey has shown that most Americans are deeply unsatisfied with the current state of the United States economy. Inflation's out of control. Most Americans are getting poor due to the rapidly rising cost of living. The housing bubble has started to burst, and the commercial real estate market is a giant mess. But unemployment is supposedly to be our, our, our bright spot. The Biden administration continues to tell us that unemployment rate is less than 4%. There are a lot of jobs available for those who want them, but is this really true? Not. Nah. It is imperative to understand that our government places unemployed persons into one of two categories. Jobless people are classified into one or two categories by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Either unemployed or not in the labor force. To be classified as unemployed in the month, they are surveyed. People must be actively looking for work. If they're not actively looking for work, they are classified as not in the labor force. Over time, imagine this, the definition, just like they changed the definition of this, right? Remember that one? Over time, the definition of, quote, officially unemployed has gotten more restrictive. And today, only 6.1 million working age Americans are considered to be in that category because the definition has been changed. Meanwhile, a staggering 99.8 million working age Americans are considered to be, quote, not in the labor force, end quote. When you add both categories together, you get a total of 106 million working age Americans that do not have a job right now. That's not 4%. Let me try to put it into perspective. During what was called the Great Recession of 2008 and 2009, that number never even got up to 90 million, and now it's 106 million. So that means that the number of working age Americans that are not employed at this moment far surpasses anything that we witnessed during the Great Recession. And then there's this. Most Americans cannot afford an emergency. 
When an emergency happens, the consequences could be dire, especially if you aren't financially equipped to handle it. Well, recently there was a, an analysis done of Americans. And here's what they found. And they're out there telling you the, cum, the scum. Everything's fine. Unemployment's low. Bogus. And if you have a problem, it's your problem. And understand, this inflation problem, this housing problem, this commercial real estate bust, this dollar bust that's on the way, the f financial bust that's on the way, they want you to believe that it's because of you. Or it's because of some war in some far off, far off land. No. All of this is not an accident. It's not a coincidence. It's deliberate. It's purposeful. And they create these diversions so you point your finger at each other or at a, 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 a war in a far off land as being the cause of it. Because they want to divert your attention into those other causes that aren't really causes so you don't point the finger at them. It's so they can get more power control and more financial resources. And so they can stay in power. Listen to the state of affairs it is right now in the United States. It sounds like something out of a third world country. Specifically, one out of every three adults cannot cover a $400 emergency expense. One out of three. Barely half of Americans have three months of emergency savings. Wolf Richter delved deeper and broke down just how severe a financial emergency that people could handle. The results are eye-opening. What's the largest emergency expense individuals could handle right now using only savings? 46% could not handle $2,000 or more. 11% could handle $1,000 to $2,000. 11% couldn't handle $500 to $1,000. or 14% couldn't handle $100 to $500. And 18% could handle less than $100. In other words, more than half of Americans could not pay for a visit to the emergency room, the average cost of which is $2,200, without resorting to loans or possibly having a yard sale. But don't worry. They'll tell you. The government, we're, we're there to back you up. And they keep quoting the FDIC, you know, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, saying, well, what limited money you plebes do have in the banks, it's protected because we can protect up to 250000 Well, I went to the FDIC website. They backstop $17 trillion worth of deposits in banks in our country. And to backstop that, they have to have, what, $17 trillion and $1, right, to cover it all, right? No, they have about $125 billion. Well, how can you cover $17 trillion with $125 billion? Hmm? $17 trillion is $17,000 billion. Well, wait a minute. If they only $17,000 billion, but they only have a hundred, What? Right, they can't. It's a shell game. It's a con. They're not there to protect you. But wait, no. The FDIC recently bailed out. Remember that Silicon Valley Bank? And their depositors, in fact, they said, well, even if you have 250000 more than that, uh, we, we got your back. We, we, we got you protected. Well, let's look at that. Because somebody at the FDIC mistakenly, think of a whistleblower actually just by accident saying, you know what, I'm tired of this guy. I'm tired of the lies. I'm tired of the manipulation. I'm getting some information out for the public so they really see what's going on. The FDIC, quote, mistakenly, end quote, releases complete version of a document showing the U.S. government spent $12,700,000,000 to bail out 10, just 10 wealthy depositors amid the banking crisis this past March. Ten depositors had $12.7 billion in Silicon Valley Bank. Ten. And that's why the FDIC bailed them out. <gasps> Spoiler alert. They were all Chinese accounts. How does that make you feel? Make you feel good? Yeah. 
This wasn't about systemic risk. It was about bailing out billionaires who were caught. But there are regulators in government that protect us as well as the, beyond the FDIC. This recently from the Wall Street Journal, which in and of itself is tainted as being part of the globalist cult syndicate. But even they will have little morsels of truth. For a second time in 15 years, excluding the brief COVID-caused panic, regulators will have encouraged a credit mania. In other words, the regulators helped cause the problem and then failed to foresee the financial panic when the easy money stopped. Democrats in the press corps, no, globalists in the press corps, may try to pin the problem on bankers or the Trump administration, but these are political diversions. You cannot run the most reckless monetary and fiscal experiment in history without the bill eventually coming due. The first voice invoice arrived as inflation. The second has come up as a financial panic with economic damage that may not end with Silicon Valley Bank. And that's not an accident or coincidence. Monetary policy is overseen, handed over to the Fed, banksters. Fiscal policy is overseen by Congress, by the legislative branch, by the executive branch, all political gangsters, criminals. So then it should not surprise you that corporate bankruptcies reach highest levels since 2010. This from Andrew Moran of the Epic Times. New data show that a growing number of U.S. firms are collapsing under the weight of higher interest rates as corporate bankruptcies reach their highest first half levels since 2010. That's not an accident. It's not a coincidence. It's purposeful. The syndicate knows the system's coming down and they're protecting themselves. But they want as many people to have the buildings land on them as they implode so that more and more people run to them with their arms out saying, save us, and in the process, give away the remainder of their freedoms and liberties. They've rigged the buildings. Hmm? They've rigged the financial buildings. Sound familiar? And they want as many casualties as possible. Well, that's evil, Dave. Yeah, that's right. That Know your enemy. Know your enemy. Other countries that are at least trying to establish their own beachhead as the system comes down, because they realize the system is coming down, are pushing the dollar away. And you need to realize this because it's coming fast down the tracks. August 22nd to August 24th, there's a meeting in South Africa of what are called the BRICS countries. One of the biggest financial announcements were made in my lifetime on July 7th, 2023. William Middlecoop, a financial analyst, spoke about it. It was presented by the Russian embassy. The new BRICS currency will be gold-backed BRICS, BRIC, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. But there are 41 other countries that have lined up, including Saudi Arabia. Can you say bye to the petrodollar? The petrodollar that was set up in 1971 through the Nixon administration to kind of prop up the dollar as the reserve currency of the world? It's crashing down, folks. And as a new reserve currency enters and the dollar fades, a huge amount of dollars that aren't needed anymore come washing back in our shores. And you think inflation's bad now. Wait. No fact, don't wait. Because what all these countries that are establishing this new reserve currency have been doing have been hoarding and buying as many hard assets as they can get. It's the best financial insurance policy one can have in particular physical gold and physical silver we've had a number of guests come on our platform over the years ed steer craig hemke adriana reed 
Bill Holter, Trader Steff, the late, God rest his soul, Rob Kirby, who've all told you what's coming. Well, it came on July 7th. Well, I didn't hear about it on, on in the... No, of course you didn't. New BRICS currency will be gold-backed. BRICS planning to introduce new trading currency backed by gold at an August summit. Gold standard will be a great benefit to strengthening a single currency. 41 countries have applied for BRICS membership. Since that announcement, China's come out and said, yeah. Russia's come out and said, yeah. India has come out and said, we have some reservations about this. Now, India got a call, I'm sure. Hello, Modi. Yeah. You're not going to go along with this because we're going to yank your chain. We're, we, we got a lot of leverage on you because that's what it all comes down to. Also, Modi realizes that if he goes along with it just right out of the box. He doesn't have any leverage over the other countries in BRICS. So he has to say, well, yeah, but maybe not. So he can, if you will, get a better internal deal amongst the BRICS. Have a bigger seat at the table, that it's not just Russia and China, that what Modi's pushing for by this, well, we're not quite sure yet, is so that there's not just the big chair, the two big chairs at the table being Russia and China, that there be at least three big chairs, Russia, China, and India. It's about negotiating. But here's the bottom line. The negotiations have changed drastically. And that announcement was really important. This isn't something they just dreamed up. They've been working on this for a decade all these countries. And we see more and more of these countries leaving the dollar as its foundation. Part of that was actually brought about in March of 2022, another important date, when the United States used the dollar, and they've been using the dollar as a weapon for decades, but they really umped the ante when they said, we're confiscating all Russia's assets. And we're limiting your access to trading. Russia said, really? Okay. But all the other countries of the world said, wait a minute. If they're willing to do that to somebody who has nukes, and we don't have nukes in our country, what are they going to do to us? It awakened many countries. And what did they do? They started flocking toward BRICS. The end of August of 2023 is going to be a watershed event and a, and a more watershed time period historically. What to do? Well, number one, you need to protect yourself. We've talked about this. Our the experts that come on our platforms have talked about it. You need to do what those countries are doing that are protecting themselves, that are ensuring their financial survivability. There is a presentation I gave that is the top on our, uh, near our, on our website, DaveJanda.com, called Dave Janda's Fight for Freedom. And it's about my family's battle for four generations, about just this issue, about when government comes in and destroys an economy. And it's about my family's battle against the criminal banking syndicate for four generations and how to protect yourself. My great-grandfather was annihilated by the banksters. But he left an insurance policy of physical gold and physical silver for his family that saved them save their lives. That's not an overstatement. Watch the video. Many people believe it's very inspirational. It's also on the top of our YouTube page, what's left of our YouTube page, because they don't want you hearing about that. 
So they manipulate numbers, and they manipulate notifications, and they manipulate view counts, and they manipulate notifications, and they, and they hide. But it's there. And it's also always available at DaveJanda.com, our homepage. You see, the, what did, what did uh, Jim McCarthy call him? The underhanded Federal Reserve? That's kind of kind. But really, the underhanded Federal Reserve just got slapped with this announcement on July 7th. And there's a bigger announcement, again, coming at the end of August. Protect yourself. Research it. Research it. Watch that video I did on my family's battle against the criminal or national banking syndicate that's been going on for four generations. It's really important. I assure you. I thank you for your time today. Until next week. And until next time. Dream big and dare to fail. We are available 24-7 with extra content, extra shows, extra analysis, archives to all of our shows. And on the subscription side, 30 cents a day. It is beyond cost effective for priceless information that I cannot go into on public platforms. I cannot go into on the radio. But it's based on my 35 years experience with contacts I've developed to put you ahead of the curve and truly save your life in many different planes. Not hyperbole. Fact. Thank you for your time today. Dream big and dare to fail.